In October 2019, the Pentagon had a secret meeting with a bunch of CEOs in the industry of technology to discuss a sensitive topic related to the American national security. The meeting was in short about the fact that the US great excellence in military is relying on a Taiwanese company called TSMC or Taiwan's company of semiconductors, meaning that tanks, satellites, drones, fighter jets, missiles, plane carriers, wireless communication systems and each of the US new military technologies that needs electronic ships, TSMC is the manufacturer. The calamity is the fact that TSMC has no replacements and without their ships, the whole American military weapons are nothing but toys. In fact, TSMC isn't important for the US military only. Literally, the whole world relies on this company in every stream of production that includes technology. So, who is this TSMC that every part of the world is talking about in the last few months? How did it rise and surpass its Japanese and American competitors to the extent that a giant like Intel looks like a fly next to this company? And the most important question, how did a country that has no oil, no gold, no gas and surely no natural resources was able to build the most important company in the world for the time being? and how he was able to control one of the most complicated sectors like semiconductors. But before we dive into details, make sure to subscribe and press that notification button so you won't miss our videos. In 1950, America started giving aids to Taiwan with a value reaching $100 million per year. Back in those times, Taiwan was an agricultural country and one of the poorest countries in Asia. In 1952, for example, the average income per capita didn't surpass $170. The same income per capita in Congo, which is one of the poorest countries till today. But this dire situation didn't stay for too long. Taiwan ceased to take helps from the US in 1965 and started thinking of how to shift from the agricultural economy to an industrial one. The first important step of Taiwan was in 1973, when the Ministry of Economic Affairs established the Industrial Technology Research Institute ITRI, to become the biggest establishment of research and development in the country. That's because the government assigned the most intelligent engineers and researchers in Taiwan. After three years, Taiwan started sending teams of engineers and experts to learn integrated circuits technology and semiconductors. Parallel to that, the Taiwanese government was trying to convince the bunch of Taiwanese engineers that are working in Europe and the US to come back, pass their expertise and apply what they've learned. And that of course comes with the privileges they want. One of the most famous Taiwanese engineers that came back was Maurice Chang. Chang traveled to the US at a young age to study in Harvard. But after one year, he moved to MIT. There he was studying mechanical engineering and graduated in 1953. The young Chang decided to work in the sector of semiconductors. Indeed, he worked with the US Sylvania Semiconductor. But the most important part of Chang's working life was in 1958, when he joined and worked for 25 years with the famous Texas Instruments, before he surprisingly left in 1983. Son Yun-swan, the former prime minister of Taiwan, contacted Chang through a minister and tried to convince him to come back and grab a hold of research on ITRI. Indeed, the Prime Minister convinced him and Chang returned in 1985 to become the president of the ITRI. That stamps the start of the most important period in Chang's life and the history of Taiwan's industrial sector. Because as soon as he returned, he was spared a visit by the former Minister of Economy and told Chang that the government wants to have a company that creates electronic ships like semiconductors and if there's anyone in Taiwan that has the ability to build something of similarity, it would be you. As expected, Chang proved he's the man for this mission. The method he used to include Taiwan to the industry of semiconductors that was dominated by giant companies is now being taught in universities because it's next level smart. Focus with me on that part. The creation of semiconductors includes two important operations. The first one is design and the second one is manufacturing. Each of these operations is an endless ocean of complications. Not every company knows how to design and not every company knows how to manufacture. In the middle 80s, there was 50 companies worldwide working on semiconductors that were capable of designing ships and couldn't produce them. So in order to manufacture those ships, it was mandatory for these companies to reach those market giants that have factories. Three of them were from the US, which were 
Texas Instruments, IBM and Intel, three from Japan, which were NAC, Toshiba and Fujitsu. Those manufacturers were acting really low with companies that didn't have the ability of production. They drove tough bargains, often insisting that the design be transferred as part of the contract, and if a product proved successful, the big company could then come out with competing ships under its own label, and the smaller firms were always second-class citizens. Their ships ran only when the dominant companies had excess capacity. Here when Chang had this genius idea, when he thought what if these small design firms could contract with a manufacturer that didn't take advantage of their own design chips and technology, meaning that it wouldn't compete with smaller firms or push them to the back of the line. And he realized that this pure play foundry would mean that Taiwan's weaknesses in design and marketing wouldn't really matter, while its traditional strengths in manufacturing would give it an edge. Chang presented the idea to the government, and as soon as he got the thumbs up, he opened TSMC for business in February 1987 with 220 million in capital, half from the government and half raised from outside investors, like the Dutch company Philips. Its first customers were big companies like Intel, Motorola and Texas Instruments, which were happy to hand over TSMC the manufacturing of products that used out-of-date technology but were still in some demand. That way the companies wouldn't have to take up their own valuable fab capacity making the ships and would face little harm to their reputation or overall business if TSMC somehow failed to deliver. But what these firms didn't realize is even if TSMC was working on these old chips, it did result in a great accumulation of expertise within their teams of engineers when it came to manufacturing, one by one. Those big firms started focusing more on design aspects and dumped manufacturing that required high-cost investments compared to the services of TSMC. The company that branded itself with competence and honesty. And from here, TSMC dominated the markets and became number one manufacturer in the world. After 13 years of its establishment, in 2000 to be precise, TSMC was able to take on 36% from the worldwide markets of semiconductors. This share raised to 51% in 2008. All of these years, TSMC was spending lavishly on the research and development in order to forerun its competitors when it comes to manufacturing techniques and methods, to the extent that competing with this company in manufacturing became really impossible. In 2009, AMD, the American semiconductors company, decided to close the section of electronic ships manufacturing and focus on design only. That's after the company realized that competing with TSMC is almost impossible. The same is being asked from the new Intel CEO, Pat Gilsinger, by big investors. TSMC is currently surpassing Intel by at least one generation on manufacturing. They are currently producing the 5 nanometer ships that are considered the most advanced worldwide. At the same time, they're building a huge 160,000 square meters factory to start manufacturing the 3 nanometer ships that are faster by 70% from the newest available ships of today. It seems like the Taiwanese are competing against themselves. I'm not sure if I shall call it a competitor, but I will since there's no one else for these guys to compete with. Intel is still going to create the 7 nanometer processors in 2023. And that's not everything. Guess who's gonna produce those processors for Intel? Exactly, TSMC. In fact, TSMC is manufacturing ships for Apple, Nvidia, Qualcomm, AMD, Marvel, Broadcom, and Xilinx. All of these companies are electronic ships designers, but they don't have the ability or the knowledge to manufacture. By the way, China's situation isn't better when it comes to this technology. TSMC's technology is ahead of China's by two generations at least, and probably three generations. China needs 10 years of research and development to fill that gap. The Chinese are trying to shorten that time by contracting with Taiwanese talents. In 2020, for example, semiconductor companies in China assigned a hundred former engineers in TSMC after they offered salaries that triples what TSMC used to pay them. But it didn't make much difference, since one factory of semiconductors requires around 3,000 engineers to operate, and the cost of one factory towers at $15 billion. Last March, TSMC said they're planning to spend $100 billion in the next three years on maximizing their production and research and some projects related to their operations. And talking about projects, here's a fun info. Most of TSMC's factories are found in Taiwan, and that of course is in benefit of the country 
and its citizens, but at the same time, it's causing the company problems. If you look at the map, you're gonna see that China is hugging Taiwan geographically. This closeness puts Taiwan in the danger of a military assault from China that already considers Taiwan a part of its land. And if that happens, it will be a horrible nightmare to the US, and especially to the Department of Defense, that because Taiwan has most of TSMC's factories, and this company is the one making ships for the most advanced and newest weapons of the US military. For example, the F-35. This fighter jet is working by electronic ships designed by the US through the American Xilinx. But these designs go all the way to Taiwan for TSMC to make them, and that carries big risks. And that's why the Pentagon pressure was one of the principal causes for TSMC to announce in May of last year that the company is willing to open a factory in Arizona with a cost of $12 billion. The whole world is struggling with the shortage of electronic ships, and that is causing a delay to car factories, phone companies, electronic devices, and everything that requires an electronic ship. The world companies are awaiting nowadays at the doors of TSMC, fighting for who's going to be served first, and that gives TSMC the comfort to control prices however they wish, which makes it the most important and vital company in the world. TSMC's market value is $550 billion and a worldwide market domination of 56%, providing jobs for more than 50,000 employees in 18 industrial facilities. So, do you also think that TSMC is the most important company in the world? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you click that button and hit that bell so you won't miss our videos.